All right, so this is kind of a, a tabletop review of some similar discs that I just tested out. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have field footage right now, but I, I hope to get to that at some time soon. But for right now, I'm just going to be talking about the discs, comparing them, getting the kind of some specifics because they are so similar that you, you kind of have to nitpick and really, really get... Um, into every aspect of it to kind of understand the differences. So uh, jump right in. One of the first ones that I really wanted to try was the brand new uh, Innova Animal, which is a lot like a Rhino. It is a putter that is slow, low glide, and pretty much stable straight with a minor fade. And uh, I'm going to be giving him my own flight numbers that I give it kind of without thinking too much about what the company gives it though I will admit once I was done testing uh, most of the numbers that I put together myself seemed very accurate so that's actually a really good thing um, uh, well why not all the discs that I tried so the Innova Animal it's in star plastic this I just got today so brand new uh, it says 173.5 grams, and I checked out with the Star Rhino, and that is, I think, 171. So they're all I mean, going to be similar weights. Uh, another one is the, I think it's Hydrogen Loft, and this 176, the Casplast Berg. This is in K1 plastic, so they're all, um, these are all premium plastics, similar premium plastics. The weight on this, I'm certain, is in the 170s. I'm thinking 172, the last I checked. And then I'm going to be comparing it to Reptilian Disc Golf Serpent. And this is 175, pretty sure. Now this is technically a baseline plastic but it's really firm and it it doesn't really take much damage so it almost acts like a premium but it does have um, you know more of a, a baseline plastic feel to it this is another reptilian disc golf serpent this is in a little bit softer plastic and so it has a little more bend to it and I've actually been using this in my bag for a little bit of time it's not too beat up but it, it's, it's seen more use than the others. And then I decided, what the heck, I will compare it to an MVP Atom. And this is in premium plastic. And then finally, the Mint Discs uh, Profit, which this is also in a baseline plastic. And the real focus of this test was to compare these four because they are supposed to be stable, slow, relatively low glide uh, putters. I would say they're more for approaches than necessarily straight putting, but of course you can putt with any disc, so that doesn't matter. But in the case that I would use them for would be approaching. And so kind of going down the line uh, the Innova Animal, the Loft, which you can see right there, huge difference. Um, this is much more of a deep dish, and it's got more of a traditional Frisbee look to it. It reminded me a lot of the, Lati I think it's Latitude 64 Beetle, and the Discraft Rattler. Those are the closest I can come to with discs that I have used, uh, but very, very similar to those. Uh, the Animal is really similar to a Rhino. It's just a Rhino with less fade, and that's the best I could describe it. And then we have the Berg, which is a pretty unique disc in itself. It's got a pretty deep groove on the top, so it has kind of a deep thumb groove but a very smooth, rounded profile. It is a slow disc. It is low glide. It is, it's overstable, but it's not really overstable since it's so slow and slow low glide that it doesn't really have enough 
energy to get far left unless you give it a lot of height. Um, and then finally the reptilian disc of serpent. And the serpent is um, kind of the same thing, like blunt, um, semi-bulky look to it, pretty straightforward. This is stable, but it's not really overstable. It's very, very straight, even on a power throw. And so I was testing kind of some short range throws, about 120 feet, just kind of almost like a long putt just to see how they would fly for approaches. And then I was testing some 200 footers and then straight power shots. And then I tested some Anheusers and Heisers. And um, so I'll try to get into it without boring you too much here. Um, all right. So I will compare what I expected to be the most similar. And that's going to be the rhino and the animal. And profile, very similar except for very clear that the rhino has a higher shoulder with that more indent coming in like this towards the bottom half of the disc. And typically when you see profiles like that, when you're comparing similar discs, visually you can tell this one is going to be more overstable. And it was. Um, more of the weight is distributed a little lower from the midline, and so that is going to allow the disc to carry straighter for most of its flight. But with having the bead on here, it does not turn whatsoever. Um, I kind of rifled it flat, 220 foot shots. So you're giving it a good throw, and it did not turn at all. So it's not like a finesse stable. It, it's stable. It did hold Anheuser's, but flattened out. So the zero turn, I would say, is accurate. One fade is pretty accurate. It um, it was a I don't want to say more overstable than I expected, but it was exactly what I expected. Uh, flight numbers on the Rhino that Innova gives two one zero three. I I gotta agree with that. That's spot on. Um, it's not far off from that at all. Different plastics, different wear is going to show some different flights, but that's spot on for that specific disc. So same plastic here, star, animal, and um, 2101, I think is what Innova calls it, and that's really what I would agree with. It was exactly that. Um, I love approach putters that are low glide. I know a lot of the rave is always how far can you throw a putter? Well, unfortunately, that's not what typically those those discs are used for. You want to be able to get a full, accurate throw that's not, not going to go too far. It's going to sit down and get close to your target. Um, I really did like the animal and testing it. Heiser, it held a really true Heiser the whole way and then had a little bit of that bite towards the end of the, the flight, but it wasn't any more than you'd expect. It was something that you could rifle flat and it would go very straight, but never get on the, the turnover. It would kind of be like wanting the hyzer the whole time, but it just kind of holds and holds and holds and then has the fade that you would expect. So a beat in Rhino is exactly what it is new. Um, so I really like that. And these would pair extremely well together. If you love Rhinos and you've got a bunch of beat up ones that you know, fly a little straighter and you like that, but you'd want to keep it in the, you know, the same plastic or, or however you want to pair it. These are both star and these would pair perfect together. So I really like the animal um, and the little bit that I did throw it. Then comparing the Berg, you can kind of see the profile. Get that out of there. This is kind of a thicker rim, but similar in its shape. It's rounded kind of chunky, but there's no bead on the Berg. It just kind of rounds itself down. Uh, what makes it so unique is that pretty deep groove up here, but it does allow to get a nice grip with your thumb. And it almost feels like you're pushing off this point with your thumb. And since really no other discs are like that, you would think that that would be kind of awkward or weird or hard hard to adjust to, but it's it's not. It feels really comfortable. And for throwing putters, it's one of the more comfortable throwing putters that I've 
tested and I really like it. The Berg, I would say, is a touch more overstable than the Animal. Um, it seems to have less speed and a little less glide. So I think like this would, would kind of take a bullet shot and kind of ride and it would be drifting down and if it were to hit the dirt, kind of have enough momentum to kind of skip forward and slide forward a little bit. The Berg kind of stalls out and then it does come with a hyzer. It's not extremely overstable, but I think their flight numbers, I think are two one zero two or one one zero two i think is that's what it is um i think the one speed is pretty accurate um one glide is is also pretty accurate it's pretty low glide no turn i would agree the fade being a two i'm not gonna go against it but it wasn't as overstable as i expected initially uh, when you give it some height it allows the disc to pan out and fade a little bit more so it is more noticeable with the fade but when I throw it on kind of a line drive it's hitting the dirt before it really gets much left so it's um, gonna hold a straight line if you're just kind of piping it if you're giving it a, an Anheuser it doesn't have enough fight in it to really flatten and come back it'll flatten and kind of come to a, a rest like this but it's not going to pan out and then fight and then come back left. It's such a slow disc. It's such a low glide disc that it just doesn't have that in it. Um, so really it can do it all. I mean, you can throw anhyzers and it'll hold it. Uh, it'll flatten a little bit. You could throw hyzers. You could probably throw it in the wind. It's not going to tip over on you and get squirrely. It's a nice approach disc. Low speed, low glide, comfortable in the hand. Um, so I really like that. Just comparing these two. The animal is a tick faster, a tiny tick more glide, and a similar stability. Maybe the Berg has a little more dump at the end, um, but relatively similar discs. Then moving on to the disc, uh, disc uh, reptilian disc golf serpent. Um, serpent's a funny name for it because it's very, very straight. When I think of a serpent, I'm thinking something that's S shaping through the air and this is is just dead straight um, this might be a little bit more comparable to the Berg than anything somewhat of a similar profile and it does have a thumb groove on top but it's very minimal whereas this is the Berg here is much deeper the serpent is just this groove and then it comes back up to kind of match the height here so it's just here as opposed to a, a full depression throughout the disc um, this allows it even though it, it's still low glide it has more glide than the Berg I feel like it has a little more speed too which is a little odd given that they have such a similar shape but um, with their kind of width there the serpent is a little bit wider at the rim and diameter very similar I would say maybe the serpent is it I mean not even they're they're almost identical um, the serpent is an awesome disc it can handle power it'll only go straight 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 as it beats up I did have a, a more beat up softer plastic one that I was comparing and this will show you can see i've hit a tree with it before so that'll that'll do it um but this will kind of flip over and then hold a small turnover and then finish flat so it's it's still not a flippy disc even though this is a softer plastic and i've hit a tree or more with it but this was a little more understable than this one this is a firmer plastic but they're, I would rate them two for speed, two for glide, zero turn. And when they're fresh, definitely a one fade. You can notice a little bit of a fade on it. Um, in this firmer plastic, that fade stays a little bit longer. In the softer plastic, this is almost two, two, zero, zero. It's just really, really straight, goes where you throw it. Um, super comfortable in the hand. The bottom of it is actually a gateway magic bottom. Traditionally an understable putter, but the top is thicker, bulkier. It's got a higher shoulder, and then that little bit of a 
thumb groove depression allows it to be a little more overstable, kind of cuts down on the glide. So I've, I've been using the Serpent for years and I've got a bunch of them and I've always liked discs like that, which is why I wanted to, to kind of check them all out together. Um, so moving on to the Loft. Now, I just got this as well and tested it out. It is the deepest dish of all the ones that I've tested. I'll just compare it to Berg really quick. So even the Berg seems small compared to the Loft. I'll compare it to a Rhino, why not? Yeah, almost like a different class or speed altogether, which I would agree to. I, I'm pretty sure they call it a Speed 1, and I think that's accurate. And this is the Serpent here. So speed one i would agree had more glide than all of the discs that i tested because it's such a deep dish and it also has a very th um kind of thin rim just compared to this one here it's just much um more like a traditional frisbee ultimate disc if you have um love or familiarity with playing ultimate or you want to play catch or you like having a catch type flight and feel in a disc golf disc this is a great um option i don't want to say it's the only option but i would say that would be my number one choice to recommend if somebody wants uh, an ultimate frisbee style disc for disc golf while it's not a super wide diameter disc it's not kind of those unique slow discs that are out there condor um Oh, geez. Sonic, I guess. Um, there's a bunch, but I, I've never really used them, although I do appreciate them. Um, feel in the hand with the Loft is, I'll be honest, it's not my favorite. It, it rounds out. It feels fine in the palm, but when you get under here, it is kind of a quick, sharp down and up, and it is, I don't want to say it's sharp, but that's the only way I could describe it, is it just feels kind of like it's you're not holding on to much it quickly cuts under it's a little sharp feeling i didn't like it if i was trying to just traditionally putt with it it didn't feel quite right throwing it backhand was fine it was nothing that i wouldn't be able to adjust to but it wasn't my favorite and um flight wise it was slow but it had more glide so i give it a three glide zero turn zero fade is kind of how it was. Um, naturally, it's going to have a small hyzer finish. Um, it did surprise me. I, I threw it on those 200 foot shots, sometimes a little further, like 220, and I expected it to flip under and just kind of drift and ride and just kind of keep going like it was going to be an understable type of flight. And it did kind of tip up a little bit, and then it started drifting a little bit, but then just locked on. A straight line and then it had a little soft sit to it and so it withstood power throws better than I thought it would there was a little bit of a breeze and with left to right right to left headwind tailwind um, it didn't affect it too much unless I got it on a hyzer with a right to left and it was pushing and carrying the disc like a sail that was a little more noticeable because it is such a deep dish and um, that was pretty much it. Otherwise, it does really go where you throw it. Um, just touch shots and finesse shots. If you're a finesse player, you play a lot of short woods courses and you like to floaty touch shot stuff that goes pretty straight or can have a slight turn on it and just hold the smooth Anheuser and then flatten a little bit. It's a nice disc. I liked it, um, but it was really cool to try and compare. And I'll just kind of get into highlights pros and cons really quick <laughs> somewhat quick um loft flight was actually really really cool i liked it but um, the hand feel wasn't my favorite the plastic is nice very similar to star or the k1 by cast class any kind of premium plastic um i forget which plastic this is but this is supposed to be their their premium um, I didn't love the hand feel, but the flight was really great, and it's a nice disc. I'd recommend it for frisbee throwers or somebody that wants a, a flight like that. 
uh, with the Berg. Hand feel is great. I, I would give that a you know five out of five for hand feel. Flight also really nice. It is low speed, low glide, minorly or moderately overstable. It's not really overstable, um, but I would recommend that to anyone that wants a nice <laughs> low glide overstable putter that they can rip on and know it's just gonna go straight and sit down. Um, would I putt with it? Yeah, probably not. But it is comfortable as a putter, but since it is so low glide and fairly slow um, in this plastic, I for sure wouldn't putt with it. But I know there's a lot of people that would probably putt the, I think, K3 plastic or K2. Um, but I've been through enough putting putters that I'm not going to go that route. But it's a really nice approach disc, and it can kind of do it all. So I really like the Berg. Um, that was a cool one. Uh, the Animal. If you like rhinos and you want one that's straighter out of the box, the animal is kind of the answer. Um, that's kind of what I was looking for and hoping for, and that's exactly how it flew. Uh, it's not going to turn really at all. It holds a nice, confident, stable line. And on Anheuser, it'll hold, but then flatten out. It does flatten out. It's not that touchy. I think it's a true zero turn and a true one fade, if not maybe a strong one you know let's say when it's new but it it's really nice it it feels decent in the hand uh, it's not unbelievable but it's good i mean i'd give it maybe a, a, a i would say four out of five for hand feel but i'm giving it a three out of five because in of classic sharp flashing razor line on the underneath it always kind of annoys me. It'll wear off or you can try to file it down, but I like to get a disc that just doesn't have that to begin with. And then last would be the Reptilian Disc Golf Serpent. And hand feel, I'm giving it a five out of five. It feels great. Flight, also great. Um, probably a mixture of like all these discs that I'm comparing. Um, it's stable enough where you rip on it and it just kind of goes straight. It'll have a small finish at the end, but not a lot. Um, when it beats up, it goes kind of dead straight. You can throw Anheuser, you can throw Heiser, whatever. It goes where you throw it, but it's stable. It's, um, low glide, but not crazy low glide. And so it has a little more glide than the Berg and maybe a little less fade than the Berg. And so if you're a fan of the Berg and you want to try other discs, the Serpent would be a really good recommendation and vice versa. If you've been using this and you want to try something else that's similar, you know, that's, that's an option too. Um, for putting duties, if I had to choose one of these just to putt with, it would be the Serpent. Uh, it feels best in the hand for the putt. It, it goes really straight and true. And I've made a lot of putts with it. I have used this more than the other ones, so that's kind of a little unfair. But, um, yeah. Uh, what else to say, really? All really nice throwing putters, approach discs that go stable straight and um, are unique a little bit and kind of how their design is. If you have any questions... Um, you know, please post, comment. This is a one-take review, so I know it was long-winded and maybe a little boring with nothing going on other than this. But um, thanks for your time. All right.